Hello there and welcome back to the channel. Plenty for me to get you up to speed on on the week ahead. Not only to mention the issues of gas flow coming out of the Nord Stream pipeline, which has seen the euro fall below 99 against the US dollar. We've also seen European equity suffering, most prominent in Germany, of course, who are highly susceptible and dependent on the flow of gas coming from Russia. So that's a main talking point. But also we've got updates on the likes of who's going to be the next UK prime minister. We're expecting that update at 12.30 today, London time. And of course, first thing to tackle on the in-tray for the new PM is going to be this very significant energy crisis and cost of living issue that's impacting the UK at the moment. And then looking further forward to the week, we've got the ECB expected to hike rates, but they're not alone. We've also got the Bank of Canada and the Reserve Bank of Australia all looking to lift rates in the coming days. We've also got a European emergency crisis energy meeting happening at the end of the week as well. So plenty for me to get you up to speed on. Before I begin, though, do please uh, like and subscribe to the channel. It'll be much appreciated. And any questions at all, feel free to drop me a comment below. But let's get straight to it and talk about natural gas prices, which have surged after Russia halted its biggest pipeline to Europe indefinitely. And of course, this is a little bit of a political tit for tat that's been going on after what we had with that ruling from the G7 last week about Russian price caps and this being then what Russia has done in retaliation on what otherwise was set to be just a three-day maintenance period. Benchmark futures have jumped as much as 35%, talking about gas prices, as Gazprom made a last-minute decision late Friday not to turn the crucial Nord Stream pipeline back on. And you, what you can see here is pretty significant pullback. Actually, uh, a lot of these European gas prices were down almost 50% from their initial all-time highs. And this wild fluctuation all happening within the course of a week. And a lot of that pullback had come as Europeans have been, despite the price, buying up as much gas as possible on the future risk of exactly this happening, looking to replenish their stockpiles going into the winter period. But the worst case has kind of materialized this morning. And that's what's really weighed on European sentiment today. And this being with the Americans out of the market for a US holiday today. A um, couple of things to be aware of then going further forward. European energy ministers are going to discuss radical proposals to cut power prices when they convene at a special meeting this Friday. It includes talk of gas price caps and the suspension of power derivatives trading as well. So a lot of this being speculation, looking out for more details in the coming days to emerge. As I've mentioned, the euro has traded below 99 uh, against the US dollar. That's the weakest than it's been since the year of 2002. So further compounding this inevitable recession uh, and the depth of it going to impact with record high inflation that we're seeing in the Eurozone at the moment. The German DAX has been down as much as 3% in early trade. Talking of Germany then, given that they're feeling economically a large brunt of this more than most other European peers, the German Chancellor Olaf Scholz's coalition agreed on a relief plan worth about 65 billion euros at the weekend to help millions of households obviously uh, deal with soaring prices that's impacting their lives in this current uh, moment in time. Key measures include a vow to cap and even redistribute huge profits made by energy companies on the back of the current crisis, of which we've seen in the most recent quarterly earnings season for the likes of Total Energy, for Shell, BP, Saudi Aramco, phenomenal size profits that they've seen. And the government's here looking to redistribute some of that. Um, increased payments to pensioners, students, parents and the unemployed is what Germany are looking to do and actions to rein in astronomical pace at which electricity prices are rising. The country also is considering relaxing several of its core energy and environmental policies in order to mitigate the fallout, excluding the operation of nuclear and coal power plants that it had planned to close as well. So a lot of this very interesting, of course, not only because of the European meeting happening at the end of the week, but also because we are also expecting when the new PM gets confirmed in the UK later today, they start in office Tuesday, and then actually we're looking for an energy speech to happen very quickly on Thursday. And do some of the elements that we are seeing proposed in Germany appear in the lights of the UK? Now, talking of the UK, of course, Liz Truss is seen as the outright front runner here and very much expected to win if Rishi Sunak did 
turn it around last moment, that would be a somewhat surprise for markets. The main things then that we're looking out for here are two major options, which the FT article this morning was suggesting that are being spoken about. Uh, and this has come from the likely chancellor if Liz Truss wins, uh, Kwasi Kwerteng, who's talked about two real main um, ways to approach the energy crisis. One being a £100 billion government bank loan scheme that would hold prices constant for all households. Or secondly, a more tailored approach, which would cap the number of subsidised units of energy to target poorer households. Uh, if Liz Trust wins the leadership contest, uh, again, we'll be looking for her to take office as soon as tomorrow. Uh, and then, as I said, the first thing that's going to be probably spoken about of the greatest importance will be what are their intentions to do lots of speculation in different formats uh, on this energy crisis to be confirmed then talking of energy markets quick word on opec plus uh, you know, everything really that ties all of the news stories together is energy prices and opec plus is likely to keep oil output quotas unchanged for october at a meeting happening today according to five opec sources on reuters although some sources would not rule out a small production cut to bolster prices which have slid of course in recent times given this idea of a more impactful economic slowdown under the strain of rising inflation so we'll be looking out for that confirmation later. In terms of other news headlines to be aware of, there are a few things starting with China. Uh, we've got this one where um, the Biden administration is considering moves that would restrict US investment in Chinese tech companies. This is in the ongoing row between the US and China, citing people familiar with the situation. For China themselves, domestically, we're also seeing at the moment then that the COVID situation uh, is uh, basically equating to further more onerous lockdowns in very large geographic cities. Um, the western megacity of Qingdu, which is the sixth largest city in China, has ordered more mass testing there from Sunday as it tries to contain the latest outbreak. And do be aware that from a, an economic data perspective, you do have Chinese trade data coming out on Wednesday and CPI inflation metrics coming out at the end of the week on Friday uh, as well. Looking at the overall, though, week ahead, what have we got on the agenda? Uh, as I mentioned, it is actually US Labor Day holiday today. So definitely quite interested to see how the market's going to react over this 24-hour period, particularly when the US starts to come back in tomorrow. But on Tuesday, we do get the services PMI data. That's expected to have slowed in August to the lowest reading since May of 2020. So really in the immediate aftermath of COVID taking hold. Uh, and it comes as economic growth decelerates amid aggressive rate increases that we're seeing implemented by the Federal Reserve to tackle the persistent inflation issue at the moment. As I mentioned earlier, though, um, it's not just um, the uh, ECB with interest rate decision this week. We're going to get first the, the RBA. They're expected to hike by another 50 basis points on Tuesday. Then on Wednesday, we get the Bank of Canada, as you can see here. They're expected to hike by 75 basis points after a 100 basis point hike in July. Inflation is still well above target. The economy is growing strongly. And with the BOC having openly talked about the need for front loading policy tightening. Um, so expectations are still for an aggressive 75 basis point move there. And then for the ECB, just flipping over to Thursday, that's going to be one of the main events of the week. Um, up until last week, expectations have really been coalescing around the prospect of a 50 basis point move. Um, however, a sourced report that we had on the 26th of August revealed that some policymakers wish to discuss the 75 basis point rate rise due to the deterioration in the inflation outlook i.e. hitting new record highs and approaching double digits and likely to move higher beyond that point. And that's led to the likes of Goldman's, Credit Suisse, uh, JP Morgan, Bank of America. They are all gunning for 75 uh, basis point rate hike, which would be obviously a larger than their first clip move of 50 that we saw at the prior meeting. Markets are heavily leaning in that direction with around an 80% probability in favor of going 75 rather than 50. And that, in terms of... The rest of the week, from a Fed perspective, a couple of speaking events to look out for. The Beige Book comes out on Wednesday. We also get on the same day uh, voting member of the FMC and leaning hawk. Uh, Lurietta Mester speaks 
on that same day. And you've got Jerome Powell giving a speech as well on Thursday. So that is it. Um, thanks for listening. And again, remember to subscribe to the channel if you're not already done do so. I've got some new content, uh, more evergreen pieces, particularly on the investment banking corporate finance side that I'm working on with my uh, new colleague, Stephen. So watch this space and have a great week ahead. Take care.